AMD Ryzen 1500X3D was an amazing CPU due to its 96MB of L3 cache. The new 7800X3D is advertising 104MB of cache, so does that mean it's bigger? Well, not exactly. So in this video, I'm going to clear up AMD's marketing speak, and I'm going to tell you my honest opinions on the 7800, 7900, and 7950X3D. <laughs> So, about the 104 megabytes of cache in the 7800X3D, it's actually the same 96 megabytes as a predecessor, but they're combining the 8 megabytes of L2 cache to make 104. So, I don't know why they decided to start doing that starting from this year, but to be fair, Intel has already been combining their L2 and L3 cache numbers for years now, so I guess AMD is like catching up with like misinforming people. Anyway, anyway, here's what the 7800X3D gives you over the 5800X3D. Your boost clock is going from 4.5 all the way up to 5.0. That's over a 10% increase, and that's amazing by the way. Also, your L2 cache is doubling from 4 megabytes to 8 megabytes on a 7800X3D. And how does that affect VR chat and games in general? Well, I don't actually know, but I have a feeling that bigger number equals better. And as for the base clock, it's going from 3.5 all the way up to 4.x. Uh, yeah. AMD literally like released all the specs, but they didn't tell us the exact number of the base clock for the 7800X3D. All we know is that it begins with a 4, and based on my calculations, it's either 4.20 or 4.69. Nice. Anyway, combined with all the under the hood improvements that comes with moving to the new architecture, as well as AMD's guarantee of supporting it until 2025 and beyond, the 7800X3D is a winner! This is hands down, by far, the best CPU you can buy for VR chat, and maybe all games in general. And that's no surprise, because the 5800X3D was a beast as well. Like, if you're a lucky person who put off building a computer until this year, like, this is it. Your time has come. You basically hit the lottery. And as for me, I'm, like, really jealous, because I just upgraded my CPU and my GPU, like, less than six months ago. So I'm gonna be here for a while, I can't just upgrade every six months like that. But anyway, I'm so happy that these new processors look so amazing, because I've always been on Team Red. But that's not the most exciting part about their announcement. I actually like the next processor even more. Look at this little car. Anyway, the 7900X3D looks like a complete beast. Compared to the 7800X3D, your boost clock is going from 5.0 all the way up to 5.6. That is absolutely insane. Also, your base clock is going from 4.x to 4.4. And your L3 cache, like, oh my god, you're going from 96 all the way to 128. Like, 96 was already revolutionary. Like, my performance in VRChat became, like, like, so, like, unbelievably smooth. I was like, finally, a CPU can run VRChat without, like, dying when it shows over 10 people. And if something that good was 96, I can't even imagine what 120 megabytes is gonna give us. In addition, the L2 cache is going from 8 megabytes to 12 megabytes. That's how they got that 140 megabyte figure of the advertising. And the best part is that the number of cores is going up by 50% from 8 to 12. And this is actually a super, super important point that's very personal for me. Because when I upgraded to the 5800X3D last year, I was coming from the 3900X. And the 3900X, it was a 16 core processor. So I was actually paying over $500 to lose performance in multi-core. And let me tell you, that felt really, really bad because I often use multi-core programs, such as Adobe Premiere to make this video, and other stuff like 7-Zip and Unity. And ever since I upgraded, I've been coping like, oh, it's okay for me to lose all that performance because I have the best gaming processor. But honestly, like this whole time, I've been wishing like, damn, this is kind of slow. <laughs> And finally, AMD was smart enough to solve this demand. Because I bet there's a lot of people like us. Like, we want the ultimate gaming performance with a huge boost clock, 5.6, and 128 megabytes of L3 cache, and we want a lot of cores, because we use programs for creatives or professionals, or we want to use programs for creatives and professionals. So the 7900X3D, it fills that niche, whereas before, there was just nothing serving us. You have no idea how badly I want to have this processor. If only I didn't upgrade six months ago. The last processor they revealed was a 7950X3D, and out of all the three, this is the one that I might buy, and let me explain why. So compared to the 7900X, you're going from a boost clock of 5.6 to 5.7. And your cores are going from 12 to 16. Yep, again, your number of cores is going up, and the boost clock is going up. And the base clock is actually going down from 4.4 to 4.2, but that can't be helped. That's just what happens when you have more cores. The L3 cache is the same on 128, and the L2 cache is increasing from 12 megabytes to 16 megabytes. And as for differences, that's about it. But you know what? Going from 12 cores to 16 cores is nothing to laugh at. So if you, meaning you the viewer, if you make money on your computer using creative or professional programs, then the price difference is not going to be that big for you, right? Like in all actuality, it's going to be a couple hundred dollars, and you can pay that off in like what? Like one gig? And combined with the fact that you'll be keeping the system for like, you know, years and years to come, I think there's a lot of people who might get the 7950X3D. Because on your downtime, you're still getting the godly gaming performance of the 7900X3D with a little extra cherry on top due to the higher boost clock and the bigger L2 cache. Other than that, there's not much to say about 7950X3D. It's more of the same goodness, so let's talk about pricing. So the pricing of these new X3D models is... I don't know. Nobody knows, because they revealed all this information of all the specs, and they left out the price because they're assholes, I guess. Honestly, this sort of thing should be illegal, and it really shows that we live in an oligarchic society where companies can step on the common man. But anyway, thanks to using AMD processors for my whole life, 
I think I'm qualified to give an educated guess on the prices. So here we go. The 1700X3D, I think it'll be between $450 and $550. And the reason for that price is that it's reusing the old technology to have the 96 megabytes of L3 cache, but the X3D is like a proven line now. Like before it was experimental, they didn't know how it would be, but now like we all know it's the best thing. Because hey, I don't see anything better. You guys, do you guys see anything better? And at the $500 price point, I think that's a pretty good cost for people who want to build an amazing gaming rig for VR chat and all games in general. And as for the 7900X, like I showed you guys, it's getting a big boost in boost clock, L3 cache, L2 cache, and obviously the number of cores is going up at 50%. So I think this is going to be a pretty good price jump. I highly doubt it'll be under 650 and it'll probably be more close to the 700 to 800 range. And $700, that is kind of a crazy price to pay for a CPU. Like I realize this. I realize that in the past, you could build a whole computer with $700. And now you're just getting like a tiny little CPU square. But I don't know, this is the only CPU on earth that fulfills the niche of amazing gaming performance with 128 megabytes of L3 cache and also amazing multi-core performance with 12 cores with 5.6 boost clock. So if you're creative or professional or you wanna be creative or professional, this is a CPU that you gotta keep your eye on. It could very well be the GOAT value of this generation if you're a creative or professional. If you're a regular gamer, maybe stick to the 7800X3D. Oh, and by the way, when the real presses do come up, I'm gonna put them at the top of the comments along with links to where you can easily buy them. And if you buy something from my links, I make a really small commission and it costs you nothing extra, so that's nice. Anyway, my pricing prediction for the 7950X3D. So AMD always prices their top line CPUs like a couple hundred dollars more than the last step. Even if like the performance per dollar ratio is like not really there. And that's why I'm putting the bare minimum at 750 and I even think it can go into the high 900s. So a super, super, super high price, but you're getting state of the art technology and you're getting a proven huge L3 cache technology and you're getting 16 cores with 5.7 boost clock. It'll pay for itself if you keep working. And if you're like me and you use programs like VRChat, which can use the huge cache for years and years and years to come, Paying that price for a CPU of this sheer power, like, you could justify it. I justify it. Anyway, if you still haven't decided on a graphics card yet, then check out my tier list.